Battle for the Planet of the Apes. The year is 2670 A.D. The place, North America. In a ceremonial setting, an ancient lawgiver begins to read. In the beginning, man and beast dwelt in peace. In time, evil men waged war both against their own kind and the apes, whom they placed in slavery. Then a leader appeared to deliver his fellow apes to freedom. Man, in the vilest of all wars, destroyed his own cities and his civilization. The leader lived through the Holocaust, along with a precious handful of survivors. He brought them out of the molten city to greener pastures, where ape and human could learn to live in harmony. His name was Caesar, and this is his story. Caesar, in a few short years, you have carved a paradise out of the wilderness. Paradise? That would mean happiness for all, would it not? McDonald has ape privileges, but there's no equality for us. Maybe you're not old enough to remember how humans used to treat the apes. I sense restlessness and discontent among the humans, and the gorillas have no liking for peace and order. Look out, Caesar! Hail, mighty Caesar! General Aldo may be riding for a fall. Before he causes Ape City to fall, I hope. Aldo and his followers do pose a problem. Ah, Lisa, dear. McDonald will be having lunch with us. Oh, he knows he is always welcome. Aldo misses the excitement of the old days when we were fighting for our freedom. But how does one control a 400-pound gorilla? You have the power. The gorillas are armed with swords. Your armory contains real weapons. No! No! You think the unthinkable. You know our primal commandment? Ape shall not kill ape. I know. Does Aldo? Forgive me, dear friend. The burdens of leadership are heavy. If only I could see what lies ahead. I've heard that my parents knew the future. Did you ever hear that? Your parents are half legend and half myth, Caesar. I've heard that they came from the future in a spaceship that passed through a time warp in space and landed in California back in 1973. And that men, civilized men, were so frightened by talking apes that they murdered them. Easy, Caesar. We've all paid for our folly. Again, forgive my emotions. I never really saw my parents. They were slain when I was a baby. You mean you never saw the videotapes of their interview after they landed? They were in the archives in the Forbidden City. McDonald, could the tapes still exist? You can't be thinking of searching for them. You yourself declared it a forbidden city, Caesar. At dawn, three figures pass a guerrilla lookout post on the road out of Ape City. General Aldo, look. They're going toward Forbidden City. It's Caesar himself breaking Caesar's rule. I hope he never makes it back. Look at those guns. They make my mouth water. Caesar, when you move, you move. You commandeered weapons in a Geiger counter from the armory and Professor Virgil from his classroom. And we're two days into the desert before my eyes are fully open. Virgil's students need a rest from his fancy theories. He teaches that time is a circle and eternity a straight line, and their brains turn to lead. What we need is practical knowledge of radiation and Geiger counters. The Geiger speaks to us all. We're getting close. From a rise... The traveler's gaze transfixed at a city crumpled and melted by an inferno into a glassy slag heap. What? Unbelievable and almost beautiful. If death is beautiful. Find your subterranean vault quickly, MacDonald. This radiation is deadly. Hurry, tell Cole. It's like a catacomb. But it's cleaner. We have time to look. Governor Kelp, intruders! Ah, there they are. The scanning devices are still operative. So, Mendez, you thought me mad to maintain wartime vigilance. Free lost strangers don't make a war. You don't recognize the chimp? That's Caesar, the leader of the blasted ape insurrection. He's come back to finish the job. But I'll finish him. Battle stations! Battle stations! Seize invaders in archive section! I think we've found it. Is that my mother? You look like her. We saw the gorillas' war from space. We saw a blinding white light. The Earth's surface began to melt. The date meter in our spaceship read 3950. 
Destruction of our planet. That is our future. How dare you theorize about eternity? That is only one future. Time is like a many-lane highway from the past to the future. A car in lane A may crash while a car in lane B travels on. It follows that you can switch lanes and survive. Find the correct lane, Caesar, and lead your civilization to safety. Switch lanes? That makes the burden of leadership unbearable. Surrender or die! Caesar explodes out of despair and into decisive action. Out the other way! Observe the difference between philosopher and born leader. The latter switches lanes by reflex. This way! Through here! They got away. How? They were too strong for us. They were healthy. Send out trackers. Find their headquarters. Mobilize for total war. An exhausting double time race across the desert brings Caesar and his companions close to home. Caesar, you were magnificent. We've done nothing. Our real work lies ahead. Holt, who goes there? You know who I am, fool. Be at the schoolhouse tomorrow morning for an emergency council meeting. Something tells me our chance may have come. Governor Culp, we have tracked the invaders to an ape city to the north. Ah, with surprise on our side, this is our chance. An army that would be pathetic were it not for its deadly intent sets out across the desert. At an emergency council meeting, Caesar sums up his disastrous trip. And so because the dead city turns out not to be dead, and because of the deranged condition of the survivors there, we must consider preparations for war. No! 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 no, no. I regret this more than you, but we must plan. Bah! Planners, talkers, cowards. I welcome war, and I will not sit in council with a human. Perhaps I shouldn't be here. Nonsense! Aldo bluffs. I need you, MacDonald. I rely on you. I trust you. Through the long day and into the night, Caesar and his council draw up plans. We must erect barricades, stock food in the center of the city, create a militia, and most important, set up plans for the quick distribution of arms from the armory. Of... While General Aldo sets his own plans in action. Group A, you know what to do. The rest of you, on to the armory. And Culp's army reaches the outskirts of Ape City. Look at that food! Why have we been scavenging all these years? Caesar, Caesar! Aldo has looted the armory and has rounded up all the humans and imprisoned them in the stockade. He dared? Well, we worked through the night. Caesar, a strange army is encamped in the orchards. They have shot the guerrilla outpost. My faulty leadership. I underestimated Aldo's recklessness and Culp's madness. Barricade the street. Perhaps Aldo can hold the mutants long enough for us to organize. I must free my people. They'll be slaughtered, penned up. What's this human piggy doing out of his pen? Idiots. What are you doing here with an enemy army at the city gates? You call those human runts an army? As soon as General Aldo finishes them off, he'll come for you. So don't get too comfy. No more humans in our new world. These rifles are great, General, but we haven't had any instructions. They're automatic. Even a dumb gorilla can... Here they come. Imagine sending monkeys to fight a man's war. The gorillas gallop into a semicircle of carnage. Now! Regroup! Follow me! Victory! City the city is ours! They're coming! Get ready! Now, I want Caesar! Hope possesses the one major weapon of the battle. And it opens the city like a cannon. Can this be Caesar? Remember this? Does it remind you of the good old days when apes knew who their masters were? The wrong word. Charging from the rear, Aldo and his troops cut down the panicked invaders to the last mutant, Cole. I claim victory and full command. Now for the other human swine in the stockade. No! You say no? You sniveling talker, you say no to Aldo? Aldo, respect. Respect me! Um, ape shall not kill ape! Too late. 
You should have told me sooner, but it didn't hurt a bit. Shall we try again? Storytellers will swear from generation to generation that living fire leaped from Caesar's eyes. <coughs> Aldo will kill him! Never in a million light years! Caesar's rage is like nature unleashed. Aldo flees to the trees in vain. In the dead ah. silence, the branches snap like pistol shots and the gorilla lands like a boulder that has never known life. Elaine, you had to choose Caesar. Caesar, forgive me for saying this. Do not release us if it's going to be the same as it's always been. If we humans can't come out as equals, to work and live alongside you in our own way, together, then we'd just as soon stay penned up. I never considered anything else, at least not since I fell out of the tree. We need one another if there's to be a future for this planet. We must watch together for whatever evil might come crawling out of the haunted, forbidden cities of our world. The lawgiver finishes his narrative. Twilight rests softly on the rapt faces of his young listeners. And so we have lived together now for generations, men and apes as equals, watchfully guarding our future. Lawgiver, does anyone really know the future? Perhaps only the dead, child. Is it the evening dew glistening in Caesar's stone eye? Mm -hmm.